perfect love and complete perfect subjugation. For who an abid haqqa, then he has become a true slave of Allah. That's why the Prophet used to love being called Abdullah wa Rasul, the slave of Allah and his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, then Al Imam ibn Abdul Wahab mentioned Rahimahullah Ta'ala in defining the conciseness, a general concisive definition for worship that he brought from himself by way of asking a question from the categories of worship, which is the category, and worship has cap many categories. Just as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah defined when he gave the definition of worship, when he said it is a concisive word for every single thing that Allah loves and is pleased with from obvious and hidden actions and statements. And then he went on to mention prayer and fasting like we mentioned earlier. <coughs> but this is where we're going to stop inshallah ta'ala for today. And that this is an important point about worship. And wallahi, tallahi, wa billahi, wa aimullahi. You cannot acquire that without having knowledge of Allah's names and attributes. Without having knowledge of Allah's commands and prohibitions. Not having knowledge of why Allah created you in this universe and this place. You can't do that if you don't understand the greatness and the justice of Islam. It's hard for you to come to Allah with complete humiliation. With complete love. These are the doorways to achieve that. As the Shaykh is making clear here in this point. Because what is this worship? As he mentioned, it is obedience to him by compliance to his commandments. That's out of love. And leaving off his prohibitions. That's out of fear. Him subjugating yourself out of fear to Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is an important fact that as we say, the first stage of change is admitting you got a problem. And, and the minute you have a problem is being conscious of what your problem is. Here it is. When it comes to your servitude to Allah, what is the problem? Why can't you get up for fajr? Why can't you get out for the prayer? Why can't you read the Quran? Why can't you be entertained with the speech of Allah? Why, 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 why? Why can't you make the morning and evening dhikr? Why, why, why? All of this is because of lacking in these two categories. Complete love for Allah and complete humbleness and humiliation and a feeling of embarrassment in front of him and broken up this in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. for this is something that is important for the Muslim to understand because at least if you understand it you know what you got to work for and that's the beauty of learning about the way of the Sahaba and their worship because you see them do it, saw them do it out of complete ardent love as the famous story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during his time when the companions was returning from a battle. And in this battle that they was returning from, that they beat their enemies, that a woman had shared in a battle and she got killed and her husband was angry, wanted revenge upon the Muslims. So he was a good person, he was excellent in tracking people's footsteps, as ours was known for being good in tracking people's footsteps. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night times it was a journey to get back. They stopped and slept in a cave, and two companions took the task of guarding. They would take turns. One would sleep while the other one guarded. And then the next one, when his time is up, he would come sleep and guard. And one of them, he decided, I'm going to gather two worships. I'm going to gather the worship of praying to Allah and guarding at the same time. Now this particular man, who was a good tracker, he was also an excellent spear thrower. So when he caught up with the companions, that finally the prophet was at late at night while they were sleeping, and the guard who wanted to combine the two worships of guarding and protecting the prophet and the companions and the worship of praying, he began to pray. And the man took his spear, and they said in the narration, he was so excellent at throwing spears that he could throw to a target far away and strike it in such accuracy as if he walked up to it and stabbed it in and the person directly. That's how accurate he was. So he saw this companion praying. So he took his arrow and threw it. And the arrow went through his leg. And he still stood there praying. So he took another arrow and threw another one. The other one pierced through his leg too. 
And then after a while, I was standing like that, still praying. He thought, let me stop because before I bleed to death, he thought, and I was afraid, you know, for the companions of the prophet, the prophet and his companions. So he stopped and informed the messenger of Allah. They asked him, why didn't you stop when he first, he did it to him, threw three spears in his leg or more. I can't remember the exact amount. He said, ask him, the other companions, because they wound up killing the man. They asked him, why did you, you know, stop at the first entering of the spear? He said, because I was reciting a sword that I love so much, I didn't want, I wanted to complete it before I stopped the prayer. I wanted to complete reciting that sword before I stopped the prayer. This is how the Sahaba was, brothers. Wallahi. One of the companions of the Prophet, he had to get his leg amputated. I forgot what his name was. So when they wanted to put him to sleep, because they cut his leg, they were going to cut his leg, and then they had to cauterate his leg, you know, to stop the bleeding. And then they used fire to, you know, to burn that area so it won't bleed anymore after they cut it back then. And so when they went to cut the leg, they wasn't going to put him to see what was going to happen. See, they wanted the people to hold him. He said, no, 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 nobody has to hold me. Just let me pray first. And I put my leg up and I'm going to start my prayer. You can cut my leg off. So he began his prayer. Allah Akbar. He was so engulfed in his prayer, they cut his leg off, he didn't budge. Then when they went to put the fire to, 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 caught, uh, to, uh, to burn that area, he passed out and went to, he passed unconscious while he was praying. The reason why he wanted to go to the prayer is because these men had such great relationship and connection with Allah Azza wa Jalla and love and humbleness to their Lord. That worship affected everything. That's the difference between them and us. Imam Bukhari and the ulama were like that. But Imam Bukhari, one day he was making prayer with his companions. He was, they were sitting while he was praying. And he prayed a long prayer. And then after he salamed out, he laid on the ground in pain. And he said, he asked him, he said, lift up my soul and take the hornet that's under, under it. He said, it stung me so many, 17, I think he said 17 times. And he asked him, well, why didn't you stop the prayer? He said, because I love the sword that I was reciting, I couldn't stop. This is how they were with the book of Allah. We got to fight with our kids to learn the Quran. They don't understand the greatness of the book. The book that, when it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi one time, a camel dropped to his knees because of the weightiness of the Qur'an that we take light and not that serious. So this is what we end with for today, brothers, if there's any sisters in Islam. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to bless us to strive to achieve this quality of worship as did our salah, because that's when things are going to start changing, inshallah. Subhanahu wa bihamdi, ashadu la ilaha la anta, astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk, wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحانكم وبحمد الله شهر الله لا إله أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك بس إني كويش استفاق الله بس